Hey Flosstube, it's Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Today is February 23rd and this is video 45 already and we're more than halfway through February. So um, the days of my life feel like they're just falling through my fingers and I can't get enough of the goodness that comes from this community. So a big thank you to everyone who uh, subscribes and comments. I really appreciate you and uh, you bring me a lot of joy. So thanks for watching. Today I want to shout out a few people and sometimes I look through my subscription list to see who have I been watching and I try and shout out newer people. And I have a lot of people I subscribe to. My subscription list is really long. And so sometimes I only start at the top and it's alphabetical so I don't get to the bottom. And so I thought I would start at the, um, the lower end of the alphabet today and shout out Yankee Creek Stitchers, that's Jerry. I may have I may have shouted her out before, but um, she has some great finishes. A new to me floss tuber, X Stitch MD, and her name is Shiloh. And as I was watching her channel, first of all, she's pretty young, and I thought, you go, girl. She's going to be a doctor. She is a doctor. I think she's done with med school, and she's in her residency or is ending her residency. And as she was talking about her projects, I thought she probably has the best French knots of anybody on Floss Tube, watchers or producers, right? So I, I often thought um, if I were to go back to school, if I was, you know, much younger, that um, I would have pursued uh, becoming a doctor. It was something that I considered and I didn't end up doing it. And now with my profession I'm in now, I think I would have loved to have been an ortho surgeon going in and putting the puzzle pieces back together. So check Shiloh out. Wistful, her name is Donna. She's from New Zealand. I've watched several of her videos. She has some big projects and beautiful projects. Windy Bay, her name is Doris. And I think she moved last year. So she's in, I believe, Ohio now. Whistle Stop Stitcher. And that's Jennifer. I think I showed Jennifer out before. She has a retreat house. So she houses primarily quilt retreats, but you can rent her her um, home and have a retreat there if you want to get some stitchers together. And I think there's a group, I want to say maybe Pam and Steph has a group with that they go to the location and get together. And then Wendy and Neverland. So Wendy's a Pacific Northwest stitcher. And she makes project bags. She has beautiful project bags. I have been the beneficiary of one and I would very much recommend Wendy's bags. I will link all these people below and um, so check all of them out. And I hope to be more diligent in future videos to make sure that I'm, you know, supporting and shouting out people in our community. So what have I been doing? Well, I took Friday off and I was going to sew. I have several smalls that I've completed that I need to FFO and I, I don't know what I did on Friday. I, I think I was planning to go somewhere and I didn't and then I, um, I don't know what I did, I just kind of puttered away. I think I, I worked for a few hours in the morning and then I, I put everything away and I cleaned my craft room to some extent to where I can't find what some things that I put away. And then y'all know who that is, right? And what else? My, I had two of my kids come home this weekend. So I did a lot of stitching and visiting. Not as much in my craft room as I kind of had hoped to. And none in the yard, which I was hoping to because the weather was pretty good this weekend. Um, a lot of times my husband and I go out to breakfast on Saturday or Sunday and we didn't this weekend. Um, we are going to probably have to go buy a new vehicle. Mine's doing fine, but it has almost 200,000 miles and it's been a great car. It's a Honda and I can't say enough good things about them, but I think we're going to buy a SUV. I don't know. We'll see. It hasn't happened yet. Um, other than that, throw my notes over there. I was looking for um, a pattern. When, in my last video, I showed one of my, uh, my whip parade. One of my 10 and 20 pieces, which is called Redware, and it's out of a magazine. And Julie McConnell said, hey, you mentioned a couple of companion pieces. Can you show them on your next video? So I went digging through my stash, and they're somewhere here, Julie, but I could not find them. 
that, but I will look, I'll continue to look. I probably need to do a little reorganizing and maybe some purging is on my future also. But what I did find was something, um, I don't want to start. And this is called Hannah Pepper. It's this sampler right here. I want to say Teresa Vanette might be stitching this one. She mentioned it. This is, I, I picked all three of these or four of these up off of Stash and Load or eBay. I will um, mention which magazines they are. Um, this is, let me see if there's a copy of the, print, the completed one. I don't know. This might be the only one that I can find that's the completed sampler. But that one is um, a potential for me to start this year. Although, darn that market. Last, last week, or maybe two weeks ago, there's a lot of complaining going on on Instagram and Facebook. Where are all the market sneak peeks? And then the flood happened. And my, there was a lot of, uh, gosh, I just wanted everything, right? And my wallet told me to slow down. So um, I will say that my favorites are every single thing that Brenda Gervais makes. Every single one. Um Annie B's has at least three or more that she has done that are samplers and I'm buying every one of them. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Uh, and then, um, Teresa Kogut. Yep. She has several that I want and Scarlet house has several heartstring samplery. Yeah. Beth hit it out of the park with the um, Consider the Lilies, which is the companion to his eyes on the sparrow. So, I mean, I got to live another thousand years and I got to stitch faster. <laughs> I don't know what I, I don't think I can accomplish the first one, but maybe the second one. So I saw that and I thought, hmm, I, uh, I haven't seen that one stitch, Hannah Pepper. I don't know if I go into Google Images, I can find it, but... But well, what I have been stitching on, what I'll show you, is my uh, mo Modern Folk Embroidery. This is um, Forget Me Not Sampler, and I have made some progress on this. I'm trying to think of where I was the last time I showed you this. But you can see a, quite a bit of this is done. And I, I think I was maybe up to about here. I finished this motif. I did this one this weekend, and these... Um, this one is my favorite, right? With the crowns. Oh, I love this. This is on 40 count autumn gold by Lakeside Linens. The silk is silks for you and it's in their Navy. And the gold is, um, rainbow gallery petite treasure braid. I think I called it something else last time. PB 40. So this is just such a joy. I'm off over here somewhere, a couple stitches. So what I figured out, because you can see the line when, with half of these, these half motifs, this is really important to get right. So I'm gonna stitch all of these around here and then I will check my spacing and make sure that those fit appropriately. And I might, I might have to take this one out. I think I figured out, but the rest of them should be okay. I could fudge the rest of them. But this, this is just, this has been one of the most favorite things I have ever stitched ever. And that's a lot of stitching. So several of you are like, oh, I ended up buying that pattern. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I, here's a tip. I, I stitch on a lap stand, something this big two hand stitch. And I use an 11 by 17 Q snap. I didn't cut my fabric because then I can move it over on my lap, on my Q snap and not worry about running out of fabric on this side. It just makes it easier to navigate. So I will cut it obviously when I'm done, but I didn't cut it beforehand and I don't need it for another project right away. So, so I've been working on that. I stopped working on it for a while because I had a wild hair and this is the hands across the sea. Um, is it, I can't remember the name of the pattern that there was the smaller sampler that was sold to help raise money for the Australian wildfires. And I, I stitched the bottom band and I lengthened it by about mm, two of these repeats. 
And then I made sure that this end matches this end because y'all know what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to make a pin drum out of it. When I saw this sampler, that is immediately what I thought of is making a pin drum. So that is on the agenda today. I will. And I haven't decided on the top if I'm going to. Well, I, I have decided. I have a batik that matches it. I'm going to finish the top and the bottom with the batik. So that's something I stitched since last time. And then the other one that I've been working on, I worked on it here and there, is um, Woolamina. This was a Stitch Mania start, I believe, in 2018. What I find interesting about this is the, the colors. I used all the color for colors, but the colors are a little, they show pinky here, but they're really a little more blush in real life. And the green that were the stems of the flowers didn't have enough contrast, so I picked something else. But this, this brings joy to my heart. This is spring, and spring is my favorite season where we live. And I just love stitching on that. And I had finished my smalls, so I took that one out and thought that will be my small project. Because I'm, I'm trying to be a little more disciplined in ha with all of the big projects that I have, and I have a lot of them, to always have what many people call a travel project or just an in-hand project that you can take on the go pretty easily. So those are the whips I've been working on. <clears throat> I also want to talk a little bit about some FFOs and some kindness that I received. I picked up, I want to give away from Colleen and Cheryl at Stitching with the Sisterlies. And I met them at first Thursday at Acorns and Threads this last month. They are hooch. They're funny. So I won this Kathy Barrick. I have always wanted this. I don't know if I showed you this in my last video. I apologize if I did. I don't think I did though. I think I did an Instagram story. But this, <clears throat> I plan to pull her out and put her side by side and put an alphabet in between and make a small sampler. I'm not gonna stitch all the middle stuff, even though it's good information. And then this is just really the same thing on the other side. So that's my plan for this one. And the colors are fantastic. and. Who doesn't love Kathy Barrick, right? So thank you to Colleen and um, Cheryl. Something I did not talk about in a previous video, but I picked, but I received this as a stitchy kindness from my friend Lisa Real. Lisa's from Oregon, and she was at a stitching retreat with me in um, July when we met with a bunch of friends at Lori Textiles at her house. We had a little. It was like eight people. That's how many people could sleep at Lori's house. So we had a girls weekend and, and we got on this topic of calling it sisters of the bacon. I don't know. Bacon was like the central theme of the, of the retreat. And so everything we had was recipes and stitching shared things. It was, it was bacon related. So Lisa made this adorable, look at the bacon. Look at that stitching accoutrements holder. And she has, she found, I don't know how she did this. Lisa, you're amazing. Big scissors. It's a little snout. Is that not hilarious? I love them. They're awesome. Thank you, Lisa. I, I, I know I said thank you, but I truly appreciate the work and effort and the, fine, the craftsmanship that went into making this. Amazing. Amazing. Greatly pre appreciated. And then last video, I think, or yeah, I think it was the last video, I mentioned I was looking for a basket that was for finish for one of my stitch 10, 10 and 20s, and it's called Abigail Colby's Work Basket. Now the work basket piece, and this is a danger with having an older pattern that you're stitching, the basket I couldn't find anywhere. It was Old Colonial Designs is the name of the basket company, and someone said they still go to Celebration of Needlework in, I think, New Hampshire. Um, but Vanessa Flame Fingers was at a store, I think in Florida, and she found one and messaged me and said, do you want this? And I was jumping up and down. Yes, yes, pick me. So she picked this up for me and shipped it. Her husband went to the post office and shipped it. So Vanessa, thank you for this. I so appreciate this. And the craftsmanship is incredible. The fine details and beautifully made, beautifully made basket. A, um, a wooden bottom and the Abigail Colby piece is stitched and you mount it on 
I don't know if it's a board or, or mat board or what it is. I have to look at the instructions again, but you put it on here and then you have stitching a little like a fob and a scissor sheath, things that go in here. So Vanessa, thank you. And I can't wait to meet you in June at Stitch Camp. And then the last thing I want to show you is this amazing finished piece by JoLynn at Acorns and Threads. JoLynn does finish the soft finish work for, um, for Acorns and Threads. And I gave her my early Americans and said, JoLynn, work your magic on this and come up with something amazing. I want a banner. So she did. I don't want it to be too heavy. So she made my banner. And I, I know I put this on Instagram. I don't think I showed you all. And then the middle one, she made this blue and then there's the other four. And so not only does she, so she have a loop on this end, she also made it so you could hang the middle if you wanted to make it more of a swag or a bunching look. So beautifully hand done. JoLynn takes a lot of pride in um, heirloom quality pieces. So she will never use anything with acid. She doesn't use glues. Everything is hand done and it's beautiful. She just really did a nice job. So thank you, JoLynn. I appreciate that. And so I think that's it for gifts. Let me see if I can manage the piles in front of me. <laughs> the gray grow out, ladies. We're making headway. I just got my hair cut and my hairdresser was dying. She wanted to cut my bang shorter. I was like, no. So she cut a little bit of this down, but you can see the gray is almost to the end of my bangs. And I think by the end of this year, it should be pretty well grown out. And what's interesting is I thought it was going to be whiter actually in this light because there's overhead light. It does look a lot whiter and grayer, but definitely as you come down through the hair, it's darker. So my hair is, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it's completely grown out. I don't care about that. So let's talk about what, what else should we talk about? I have a giveaway. I actually have several giveaways here. Um, and I have some plans and I have some hauls. So as I was digging through my stash and I have some older, I've really through the years gone through my stash and the older magazines I have repurposed or recycled or donated or maybe taken a pattern out and thrown the rest of it away because I didn't know there was no floss tube. There was no Facebook groups. There was just me, right? I wasn't connected to anyone except for maybe my sister. Um, but I kept a couple things and I thought it would be fun to share some of these. So this one is a permit of Copenhagen and this is called antique. Oh, wait a minute. It's called antique collection. But look at how fun that is. That is like a, some people in front of a, a quilt store and there's a baby buggy and they've got needlework in the quilt store and it's just adorable. I love it. I am never going to stitch it. I have so many things. I'm just having to have like a come to Jesus meeting with myself about stash management program that I have going on. So that's why if you would like this one, write antique. Write antique in the comments if you would like the permit of Copenhagen. Just write antique. Voice of the Shepherd. I think I'm not sure if this was past stash to me. I don't. I don't think I bought this one. I think I picked it up somewhere. It may have been passed from another fellow stitcher. This is Told in the Garden, who is Marilyn Emblem, who is um, Mirabilia Nora Corbett. It's her. That's her mother. Um, Voice of the Shepherd. I can't. Somebody has stitched this. It might have been. Um, Brenda Handwork Maniac. I don't remember. So Voice of the Shepherd, if you would like this one, just write Shepherd in the comments and S-H-E-P-E-R-D. Then I have two of these. I, you don't know how many times I've gone through my stash and I've got two things. But this is Leona's Work Basket by Blackbird Designs. And I'm sorry I didn't take these out. And there's glare. It is what it is. Leona's Sewing Box. This is adorable. And I... Don't know why I haven't stitched this yet, quite frankly. Um, there's also on the back a couple of additional little smalls. So just put sewing box if you would like the sewing box pattern. And then last but not least, um, I have a project bag. Now I know you all are craving spring, but if you would like 
the snowman project bag and the goodies inside. I was at a retreat um, where Michelle Bendy has a snowman that was stitched and it was a gift from the retreat and stitched and mounted on this board. And I can't show you, I'll see if I can find a picture. If so, I will insert it here. And if not, you'll have to trust me. It's an adorable snowman with a, tr with a Christmas tree. This is the kit that came with it. Um, I am super proud of Michelle. She has really done a fantastic job with her plans and her market releases. I have um, the one that she collaborated with Blue Flower Stitching. I have that one on pre-order. And uh, I can't wait to stitch that one. I'm simply trying to manage some of the stash that I have right now. So I'm going to share this one with you. And I hope that whoever gets this one just really treasures it and has a great time stitching it. You can house it in your, your bag. This has little dots that look, I think, kind of like snowballs. So if you would like this particular giveaway item, it is Great Snowman. And... Um, we will, I'll draw winners the next video. Please don't write giveaway in the title. You have to be 18. You can't even ask for a parent's permission. You have to be 18 if you want to get it from me. I know, it is what it is. What else do we have? Oh my gosh, let me just show you some haul. If you're a haul person, you're gonna love this part. I am going to stitch and start on leap day, on the leap day, the long dog sampler leap day. I'll put the, the name of the hashtag here. I think it's long dog leap day sal or it's leap day sal. Um, Aaron from Two Martini Stitcher is hosting this and you can start any long dog or you can stitch on your long dog on leap day and you have to have it done by the next leap day, which gives you four years. The one that I'm stitching is life after death. And this is a new start for me. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the imagination that goes into these is incredible. What can you say, right? So I picked my threads first. This is Silks For You. And this is a variegated, oh, that's a good picture. It's purples and turquoises and navies. And it's beautiful. <clears throat> Someone asked how I, what I, how do I, manage the hanks of silk that I have. And so what I've started doing is putting them on thread drops because it's just a little more manageable to use them. But when it comes, it is a big loop basically of all of the fibers. And truly what I do is I find where I would like to start and end the threads and I just cut it twice. So in the loop, I find the spot where I want to cut it, I cut it and the directly opposite, I cut it again. And then you can take the little um, ties that are on the, the silk that manage it in shipping. You can take those off and then put them on thread drops. If you're a knitter, this is going to feel very nerve wracking because a knitter does, never would do that, right? A knitter is going to make it into a, a cake or spin it or whatever you do with it. Change it, change the format from a skein to a, to a, a cake or something else. It's okay. It's not going to, you're not going to hurt anything, but to me, this is a good length. Now, remember this is double because it's put on, it's put on this way. It's just knotted over the thread drop. But this is, I'm going to stitch on a 40 count navy bean from Lakeside. This is sort of a taupey color. It's almost a grayish taupe. It's like a grayish, which these threads will just absolutely pop on. And I can't wait to start this. I have thought about starting it early and I've held back because I've got other things to stitch. I know, surprise, right? I've got other things to stitch. And I love this linen. It's, um, it's sort of like a little bit of a, it's almost like platinum, but it's got a little more movement, a little more color than platinum. Um, and so I showed you this last time. I showed you this one, Summer House Stitch Works. And I'm going to stitch this on what's left of my, of my fat quart, my fat half. And this is the thread. This is Silken Colors Worn Brick Path. And Janine at Acorns and Threads, we talked about this. She had the thread. There's a weird thread that this calls for, something I never heard of. It is a Stilby by Dragonfly Lotus Designs Petite Mulberry Collection. 
but I'm using Worn Brick Path by Silken Colors. This should be beautiful. And then the one down here, I think I have um, Lucky Penny by R&R &R that I'm going to use. And this is the, the thread I'm going to use for that. This is Cranberry by Belsois Classic Color Works. So that's on the short list to start. But I need to get my fabric cut and figured out before I start stitching on it. And... So let's talk about some future plans and what's on the short list. So I know I told you last time, 10 and 20, right? It's my focus, but let's be honest. I do what I want. I do whatever I want because this is, oh, sorry to bump you. Life is short. And this is my, these are rules that I live by. I do whatever I want to do. I don't feel bad if I start a sale and I, and I don't finish it. I don't feel bad if I say I'm going to be in a sale and I don't start it. Um, I don't feel bad if I, if I kick things up and I let them sit in my stash, it's all for me, right? It doesn't matter. Um, and there's no stitching police, but I was going through looking for a couple patterns and it made me pull out some things that I definitely want to stitch. I think I showed you this one maybe last time. This is hands-on design block party mend. And is that not just adorable? It, someone on Instagram stitching this and I thought, why am I not stitch this? It is so stinking cute. So, and it comes with the wool that you put on the top up here. So that is on the short list. Gathering the green sampler. I've loved this ever since it came out. I think several people have stitched this. I think Brenda sampler stitcher showed it on her, their video. Um, Rainbow Hollow Farms from uh, Rainbow Hollow Farm rabbit hollow farm sampler by stacy nash and um so sweet those rabbits just kill me look at those oh, and the colors so there's that uh ggr i'm gonna take this one out because it's a little bit farther away picture this is the frisian sampler i picked this up at lynn's madison last year when we went to sampler green Look at that. Oh my gosh. I can hardly stand it. I would love to stitch this one this year. This one, I have all of the thread. I have a couple silks that I will use for this one. And I just need to land on the fabric. Garden Fair by Country Collection. Oh my gosh. Just look at the colors, the saturation. And I love this frame on it. The double, the, the fillet on the inside or the double framing is just amazing. So that one jumped on my short list. My big toe collection. I showed this in a video last year. This is uh, a prayer of Francis, St. Francis. And I think I'm going to try the dinky dies for the letters, which is going to change the look of the sampler significantly. And then once I see if I like those, I will add other colors for the, this band and this band. We'll see. Sometimes you take risks and it works out. Sometimes you take risks and it does not. Give thanks by the drawn thread. I loved this one when it came out and Jesse Marie is stitching it. I'm just going to just uh... now I will see what the threads look like, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to change this and the table, all of this grayish color to either black or dark brown to give it some depth. But the, the specialty stitches and the baskets are fantastic. Fantastic. Come on, this one needs to slide back in. Well, I'll just put it to the side. Here's one that's an, I apologize, this is an out of print. And um, maybe it's just, I like pink, greens, reds together, black with a punch of black. But this one, um, I saw it on eBay and just, yep, I had to have it a few years back. This is Birds of a Feather Happy Heart Sampler. Lori, my friend Lori Textile, she saw that and she goes, you've been holding out on me. <laughs> I wonder if you have that pattern. I'm like, I don't know. 
I got it and added it to my stash. My ever blooming, burgeoning, expanding stash. I'm not going to take this one out. This is Victorian Rose Needle Arts because it's in one of those plastic things that you can't get in or out without sticking to your pattern. Okay, this is Frances Eliza Kimber, 1876. Love the colors on this. Love the urns. I like this so much. I bought this pattern three times. So I have one. I think I've given one away on my channel and I think I gifted one to someone. But this one, the colors are wonderful. And I picked some threads. What did I do with those? There we go. Here's some possible thread choices to go with, the, with that sampler. These are all, this is Poinsettia by Gloriana. And the rest are dinky dyes. This is the Kimberly, sort of a medium pink, a little variegation. This is um, Poppy, which has significant variegation. It's beautiful. And then the last one is uh, Shades of Wine, which is gorgeous. So I may use those. I'm not sure. Um, this one I bought two years ago. I have a stash that's just aging, right? But I love it. This is red raspberries, uh, red birds and raspberries, the cardinals. Um, I want to say Amy Loves Tugs is stitching this. And I have a um, Lakeside Linens limited run that I think that this would be beautiful on. Again, this is all about colors for me. I love colors. And then the last one is, I want to say Heidi Cran showed this one too on a video. Elizabeth Simon from uh, The Scarlet Letter. What I love about this is the very rich, rich, deep colors. And it's possible, somebody described the colors on this as pastel. I'm not going to stitch in pastels. I want to pick threads that look like this. So I would expect that the sampler that I stitched will look much like that. All right, that's me shopping for my stash. I have a few things. I have some haul, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about this book. I bought this book probably 20 years ago, and probably a lot of you have this book, Encyclopedia of Needlework. Um, it is not just needlepoint though. There are sections like here's needlepoint materials, um, needlepoint stitches. There are embroidery stitches, and a whole section on embroidery. There's sections on counted thread, including counted thread materials, right? A section on needles, which needles to use for what? Um, a section on counted thread stitches, how you do stitches, um, double backs, just um, of the diagrams that are used in this book are really good, like really good black work type threads. Just really a fantastic resource. There's projects in the back also, card hanger. Um, you probably could find this on like Abe books or maybe Amazon. It's pretty thick. It's going to be, it's pretty heavy and it's going to cost you probably more to ship it than the cost of the book. Quite frankly, if you can find it in a used bookstore, it's a fantastic resource. Also, there's a plug for the company that I buy zippers from. I got this from Linda Jo. She mentioned this shop on Etsy, on Etsy. And they send this card where you can see all the colors that you can buy of the of the different zippers in case you're making project bags. And you can, I usually buy the 18 or the 22, I think, length. And I like to cut them down because zippers have little metal tabs on the ends of each one. And those I can't, like I try and sew, sew around those, but my needle hits it and then it breaks the needle. So I get them long enough that I can just cut the ends off and that's fine. But this is... Um, Zip it dot Etsy dot com. Zip it is Z I P I T dot Etsy dot com. She's great, and you know, you buy enough of them, they'll send you a coupon to use too. And they're very reasonably priced. These are the same YKK colors. The zippers are the kind that are sold at Hobby Lobby. And if you go to like um, Joann's, I bought some from Joann's, their zippers are four bucks a piece. You can get them on sale like buy three, get three free, but still, nothing. This is much better in terms of price than Joann's. 
So do you feel like you've already seen haul? Well, we're going to look at some haul. So that's what I have left. Um, if you are interested in sticking around, I'll show you some things that I picked up. If not, I'll see you next time. This I picked up at Michael's. And I think I showed it on an Instagram story. It was half price. I want to say it was $5. But this is um, when I when I made the tomatoes that I showed in a previous video. I have a smaller version of something similar. That was just quite a bit smaller on the platform. But this would be cute if you put like a doily on it and a figurine or you stacked tomatoes or you put some strawberries on here. It'd be a great display piece. So this Michael's, I want to say it's about the size of my hand. It's a good deal. Um, I think I showed this in a previous video also. This is Brenda Gervais. She released this hoopla and she released a Valentine's Day one. I picked up the threads that go with that. I think those are all of them that are called for. I had the Stacy Nash Halloween at Hollyberry Farm. I had the fabric, which is smoke, vintage wood smoke, but I picked up the threads. Now, as what is normal, <laughs> when I picked up the threads that are called for, this here, all of these colors here, which look like a dark blue, like almost like brethren blue, are really a black or black blue. So I, I did substitute colors and Janine helped me out. Um, Janine and I at Acorns and Threads one day were looking at these together and I picked out some substitutes. Some of it is about availability, right? Of what's available. Hmm. I think this is, what kit is this? Uh, I don't know if I showed you this one. Pineberry Lane, Merry Christmas. And the, the kit that comes with the chenille thread or the chenille trim and the background color. This is a dying to stitch kit. So dying to stitch has two clubs, I believe this year. Um, they have the berries by Erica Michaels and they have, um, what is the name of their club? I can't remember the name of the other one. There was kindred spirits, but I think that's the one that's going away. Um, but this, the one this past year that I really enjoyed quaint ladies, was Pineberry Lane. I loved that one. And I think that one's the one that's continuing. I'm not sure if it's the same name, but it's Pineberry Lane and it's going to be, I think it's Halloween focus this year. Fall and Halloween. Oh my goodness. This is outstanding. This is one of the prettiest samplers I've seen. And I'll tell you, I love birds. The one that has the big bird in the middle that's like a parrot, it's going to eat a grasshopper. I like that one, but it's the bird isn't quite what I would stitch. This bird, however, I really like a lot. So there's this one. Ann Thomas, Hands Across the Sea. Uh, off of eBay, I picked up the Drawn Thread. Uh, no, this is off of Stash and Load. Um, the Pastoral pocket fob and sampler. Now look how pretty that is. The drawn thread has gorgeous patterns. I can't tell you how pretty their patterns are. So there's that one, the pastoral pocket fob and sampler. Um, <clears throat> I picked up, this was a kit off of eBay, the drawn thread. And this is a lady who the seller was one who had picked up an estate, picked up a lot of patterns from an estate. I'm going to take this out because this is kind of blown out. But she has some she has some great deals <laughs> posted on there so this is a um, english garden pocket and this comes with the thread uh, with the fabric which is a special cut right so you can't just find that anywhere it came with the beads in the button and it came with all the silks and it was a good price. It was a good deal. So watch for the, sometimes you can get silks. Just, just get it in a kit off of eBay. And, um, I want to say the silks were half price. Now you get what you get, right? It's not like you're buying silks off the rack, but it can be a good place to find something that's reasonable. All right. I found a unicorn. I had a unicorn and, um, I almost got this as a kit off of, I think stash and low, but somebody beat me to it. And 
Um, this is the Primitive Traditions. They are no longer in production. And this is Sarah Elliott. So this is just, oh my gosh. I lived at the Oregon coast for 10 years. And this, or New England, this sort of has, captures that part of the world. Sarah Elliott. The Sewing Chest of Nantucket Sister Sailor. Sarah Elliott. Um, it was a little more expensive, but with it came a fat half of Lakeside Vintage Morning Dove, which is a light gray. Is it Vintage Morning Dove or just Morning Dove? Oh, it's just 36 count Morning Dove. So it was actually a decent deal when you count in the, the fabric. Didn't come with threads or any of the sewing accoutrement, you know, the little box, which I can get a box. Um, or the scrimshaw, it looks like a scrimshaw ruler. That's okay, I have to have that. I've been on the lookout for this one for a long time and was very excited to pick it up. And I recently picked up another unicorn that is in the mail to me. So, there's that. And then the last thing, this I've got at a quilt store. And there are a lot of people who are doing wool applique. Um, this book is a fantastic resource. Wool Needle and Thread, um, the go-to guide for wool stitchery. This is by uh, Lisa Bonjean from Primitive Threads. If you do wool applique, you'll be very familiar with the name. Um, she, I'm just going to give you an example. She'll show you step-by-step -step how to do a stitch. Uh, she'll show you how to attach things. Just a fantastic resource. I was tickled pink to find this. Um, I didn't know about the book. I'm sure a lot of people already do. Uh, but I picked it up at a quilt store. It was on sale, I think 35% off. You probably can get this from Amazon or Abe Books as well. Wow. I didn't know that I had so much to say today. Um, it's been storming here this morning. I woke up and it was raining outside and blowing. And so it's been kind of a lazy day. I hope to get in and sew some more and have some FFOs to show you next time. Most likely market release and the market Saturday at my LNS, which is acorns and threads will have happened. So it will probably be all about new stash next time. I hope you have a great day and I will see you the next time. Take care.